My name is Ari Goldkind, and when I go to a lot of these events, I always think that nobody knows who I am. And people go, who's that guy in front of us? And what I'm finding more and more is that more and more people are starting to hear what I'm talking about, hear my message, and basically get behind the idea that we are not telling the truth about the challenges that Toronto has to face. And my whole philosophy of what I'm doing is that the mayor is a voice with 44 other voices. And what really frustrates me and got me to put my name out into the world and say, look, this is what I stand for. And, you know, if David's not shy about taxes, I'm bold about taxes. I've done well in life. I've made a living. I'm a successful criminal lawyer, as unpopular as that is to some, I'm very proud of it. But if I can't afford a couple extra tanks of gas a year to support wheel trans, to get TTC built, I came out with a policy a month ago, which wasn't even mine, which is we need to have the vehicle registration tax come back. If I own a car and I can't pay $60, $75 a year so that somebody who's paying $1,500, $1,600 to use a Metro Pass, this is a city that really has it backwards and forgets the idea of the 44. And the idea that a mayor can be king or queen and do whatever he or she wants is ridiculous. So much of what I'm doing is about leadership. It's about giving the people of the city an option that isn't Ford light. And so much of my philosophy is about rallying council, 44 people with a very different mandate with this war on the car nonsense, this I saved a billion dollars nonsense, this respect for taxpayers. What about all the renters in this city and the percentage? Oh, okay. Young lady, I like you. You're going to follow me wherever we go. I'll tell you what my schedule is tomorrow. You're going to be in court with me before the jury. Okay, so I really am unscripted. People find that hard to believe. To tear up Transit City, and many of you know this, but it's something I feel very deeply. The whole idea of Transit City, which to me should be in place, the fact that a current candidate the other day went back to that map and then put on a DRL there to fight with John Tory's smart track where it's basically my toy's bigger than your toy, your toy's bigger than my toy. I mean, you know where I'm going with this? This is an absolutely uh, irresponsible way to plan for transit when you have somebody like Andy Byford who's given his entire life, if you know who that person is, Morgan started that conversation. This is a man who's given his entire life to transit. And for any politician to score points or because Ford's big in Scarborough, then another candidate's going to try and match Ford in Scarborough. You lose integrity and you lose credibility like that. So it's absolutely bizarre to me that we would throw out a concept like Transit City, which the whole idea of it was to connect parts and pockets of the city that didn't have the same access to jobs, infrastructure, arts, commerce, that I do that I live at Spadine in St. Clair. So my view of transit is it's actually being decided. It doesn't need the help of any candidate. It simply needs somebody with guts to go back in time and to say we got it right. And that's why I said in my opening remarks, we don't need Ford light. So that's my answer on transit. Very quickly on streetcars, I'll give you a very personal anecdote. Whenever I'm stuck behind a streetcar, and from the day I launched my campaign on my website, we talked about parking on arterial roads, the fact that there should be bus express flybys, which is now being discussed. Do any of you know what flybys are? It basically means when a bus comes to a light, it doesn't stop the way you and I do, or as we drive here, it goes through on the side. You cut a bit off the curb. And the reason I say that, and this is the end of my answer on streetcars, wherever they are, whenever I'm stuck behind a streetcar on King, I always say to myself, oh, God, this streetcar is holding me up. And then I think to myself, there's 70 people in that streetcar. I'm one. So part of being a human is having the, the insight to go back into my own brain and go, listen to me. Check yourself, Ari. You're one in a car burning gas. There's 70 people there taking a mode of transit. So when I hear people say, I'm stuck in traffic, like they're stuck in traffic, I'm sorry. We're traffic. I would like the candidates to tell us what they think if we were to declare a transit fair holiday to get the cash poor people to the polls so that the province and the feds see the number of people who've got to get there. 
Yes, it's a great question. The answer to me seems clear. The downside does not exist. The upside is huge. It would restore civic pride. It would get people to actually have a voice. And I will say this because I can't help it. You know, if people don't make certain choices that really show what the values of this city are, and we end up either with Ford or Ford Light, my view is, and I, you can all yell at me, I'm hoping you don't, then we get the city we deserve. So anything that gets people to the, to the polls, I think is important. And, I, and, the, and the end of that answer, I said I'd be short, but I'm a lawyer. The end of that answer is, I, no, not on that one though, but I, here, here's the thing. In the eyes of so many other people in the world, and I travel, I'm proud to say I'm tra I travel. People say, oh, Toronto, Ford. If people around the world or in other parts of Ontario or Canada heard that we had a TTC that was free for the purpose of getting people to vote during the polling stations, I think that would be a tremendous source of pride, not only within our city, but for other people looking at how we're turning the tide and making a change. When people see all these polls that say Chow's in front of Tory, Tory's in front of Chow, Chow's back in front of Tory, Ford's bringing up the, I'd say bringing up the rear, but that's different. So in any event, it affects your behavior when you go to the poll. And in my view, ranked balloting eliminates that for this reason. I believe voting should be a matter of conscience. I know that sounds weird in this pragmatic, strategic voting, I'll vote for whoever I can to get Ford out. How many times have all of you heard that at the door? I don't care how much I love David Sicknacki, his policies resonate, I can't at this point vote for him because I just gotta vote for the person who's gonna get Ford out. If voting was a matter of conscience, in the ranked ballot way, I think we would end up having a result that would one, surprise us, and two, please us. That's my answer. I believe we've been sold a bill of goods on privatization that I do not agree with and I think there are real problems with. I think we're learning more and more that that philosophy is not all that it's meant to be. And as somebody, again, very concerned about in income inequality, minimum wage issues, I am not a big fan of a race to the bottom on wages, so I am not a big fan of those things. So that's my